Hello, friends, and welcome. Pro-Life leader Frank Pavone here. Thank you for joining me for a time of prayer and scripture reflection. We are continuing to celebrate the Easter season. It's a period of 50 days of special joy, alleluias, reflection on and invigoration from the resurrection of Christ. It makes us the people of life, and we are, as we delve into scripture each day, delving into the word of life, this is the foundation of all that we do to advance the kingdom of God and to def defend the most defenseless. Let's put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. And during our time, if you want to leave prayer intentions in the comments, please do so. We'll all pray for one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, you who have conquered death, you who have poured out on us your Spirit, you who have given us birth from above and a new life, Come, purify us of sin, for we repent of all that we have done wrong. Strengthen our witness to your gospel, and may, as we delve into your word now, may we understand it more clearly, live it more faithfully, and proclaim it more effectively. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Our reading is from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear it, the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can this happen? Jesus answered and said to him, You are the teacher of Israel, and you do not understand this. Amen, amen, I say to you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But you people do not accept our testimony. If I tell you about earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in Him may have eternal life. One of the things we take away from this reading today is very simple. Our faith is all about life. Our religion is all about having life, a gift from God. And what we learn here is a fundamental truth of our Christian discipleship. Namely, that we live on two levels. We literally have two types of life. Our physical, ordinary, human life, which began at conception. And then we have a share in God's life. Now, so many scriptures, starting with this one, speak about this. St. Peter talks about us becoming sharers in the divine nature. Paul talks about us walking in newness of life and being a new creation in Christ. What is, is this all about? This is about entering into the events we just celebrated. Jesus went to the cross willingly. He suffered, died, was buried, and rose again. And that was done for us. Now we know that. He did it for us. He died for us. Except that that was on the other side of the world two, over 2,000 years ago. How does it connect with us? How, does, how do we have the power that comes from those events. And this is what Jesus is talking about here. You must be born from above. Born again. That same word in the Greek New Testament is translated both ways. From above and again. Because obviously we can't be born again physically in our normal human life. But we're born again, we're born a second time because we're born from above with a life that comes from God. We're living supernatural life. Now, how do we get that? Through faith and baptism. Different denominations believe different things about baptism and when and how it should be administered. We can put those discussions aside. The fact is Jesus himself said, you must be born again of water and the Holy Spirit. And then before he ascended into heaven, he told his disciples, go and baptize all the nations 
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And this is where we get the sacrament of baptism. And we see in the Acts of the Apostles, we see this happening. The preaching occurs and then people say, okay, well, what are we to do? This Jesus died and rose again for us. You're saying He died and rose to take our sins away. What do we do? Well, we repent of those sins. And we accept Him by faith and by baptism. And what happens? We are born again. Now, many of our friends in other denominations use the term born again. And I remember Norma McCorvey, you know, I was one of her spiritual guides and ultimately uh, received her into the Catholic Church, Norma being the Jane Roe of Roe v. Wade. And uh, in the, the course of her growing interest in Catholicism, she asked me one day, we were in the car going to a pro-life event, and she was in the back seat, I was in the, in the front. I always remember her saying, Father, is there such a thing as a born-again Catholic? And I said, if we weren't born again, we wouldn't be Catholic. Being born again is essential, as this gospel indicates. We're able to believe in ways that we can't on a normal human level. We're able to hope with a strength that we cannot muster on, a, on our ordinary human strength. And we're able to love with a capacity far beyond what our natural human life allows us to do. This supernatural life born again obviously has it as its foundation our natural life. It's one of the reasons why pro-life is so important. How can you accept the life from above unless you're alive in the first place on a human level? You can't be born again unless you're born the first time. So to preserve the lives of Christ's future disciples and to preserve their opportunity to even hear the gospel and be born again, we defend their right to be born the first time. Second thing about this is this life from above brings us all the gifts of the Holy Spirit so that we are able indeed to better discern the moral law and live the spiritual life. In other words, being born again enables us more easily to be pro-life. Some people ask, well, how do we convince? Oh, I tried to convince my friend as was for abortion and they couldn't understand it and they didn't get it. One of the reasons some people don't get it is they're not born from above. To be born again brings us the ability to see things as God sees them and to discern the value in creation, including the value in human life. So it is true, although the general work of making disciples never replaces our specific pro-life work, but it does, in fact, lay the groundwork in the sense that when someone comes, and we often hear pro-life activists, especially those who are believers, which most are, say this, that the sooner we can bring someone to Christ, the sooner we can enable them to be born again, the more free they will be from the deception of abortion. And we see this play out like we just had the renewal of the vows of our baptism at Easter. Well, the renewal of the vows of baptism, the baptism by which we are born again, includes saying what? Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? One of the works of Satan is death. Jesus said in John 8, Satan is a liar and a murderer. Abortion, cloaked in lies, consisting of murder. And the Son of God came into the world, John tells us in his first letter, to destroy the works of the devil. And so when we are baptized, when we've accepted the Son of God by faith, we stand up and we say, yes, I renounce Satan and all his works. I renounce sin and I renounce all his empty promises. Pro-choice, the idea that there's freedom and liberation in abortion is an empty promise. The idea that it's health care is an empty promise because it brings destruction of life, destruction of health. You must be born from above because when you are, you will see things more clearly. You will appreciate the value of creation, including human life. You will understand the ways of God and you'll be able to believe, to hope, and to love in ways that are impossible for an ordinary human being. We can look at the teachings, including the teachings on life. We could look at all the teachings on morality and sexuality and justice. And just looking at them from a human point of view, we can and actually 
we should because it shows we understand these high demands, say, well, this is impossible for, for me to live. And that's where we remember we are born again. We do not try to live these things just on ordinary human power. Otherwise, we'll be discouraged and, and just give up. We rely on the divine life that we have received by faith in baptism. Born again, we can do the impossible. Jesus talks about how we love our neighbor, forgive our neighbor, be, be detached from all our possessions. It's like, how in the world can we do these things? Carry our cross every day. Rejoice when we are persecuted. The Beatitudes, look at the Beatitudes. They turn upside down, the thinking of the world. And again, a person just looking at this, I can't do this, they throw up their hands in despair. We look at it and we say, of course I can't do this just as a human being, but I'm born again. I have that spirit living in me. Jesus said, Jesus talks about this in so many different words. He says, if you, you, you love me, my Father will love you. We will come to you and make our dwelling with you. That's what this is, the born again. He will make our dwelling. Paul says, do you not know that Jesus Christ is in you? That's what this is, the life of God in us. And that's the gift of Easter. Let's embrace it and let's proclaim it. Amen. Father, thank you for dwelling in us. This is the life of grace. Thank you for coming to us with your Son and with your Holy Spirit. May we constantly marvel at the fact that we share the divine nature. May we marvel that we have been born twice and that indeed we have your very life within us. And may this make us courageous to live out your teachings, victorious in standing against the evils of the world. And may it make us zealous in proclaiming this kingdom and bringing this new life to others. Lord, we pray for one another now, all the intentions that we have that living in this new life of Christ, we might experience every day the renewal of your love in the constant answering of our prayers. Lord, we pray for the culture of life. We pray that you would stop the efforts of the abortion lobby to extend and expand this, this child killing that is going on all around us. We ask that you would cease and stop in their tracks these ballot initiatives that are attempting to insert a fake right into our state constitutions as if there is a right to child killing. We ask you, Lord, to bless this election, that the voters may be wise, that the voters may be activated, that the voters may vote according to the truth. And we ask you, Lord, to give provision of guidance and wisdom consolation where it is needed, and provision of basic needs where they are lacking. We give eternal rest to all who have died. And now we sum up all our prayers and praises in offering the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We pray to our Heavenly Mother, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me, friends. And remember, there are some people only you can reach. Invite them on to come joining us in these programs, in these times of prayer and scripture. God bless you, and we'll talk to you soon. Hello, this is Abby Johnson of Unplanned the Movie. You know me as a longtime supporter of Priest for Life and of Father Frank Pavone. And I just want to encourage you as someone who knows of the great work of this organization, please continue to stand strong. Please continue to support this mission. It is so needed now more than ever. Thank you so much for all of your support.